In this video, we're going to go through the proof of cos of a minus b, which is a question that can come up when you're leaving cert. It's all under trigonometric identities. We're going to look at some example of trig identities in the next video, but this is just the proof. So um, in your diagram for the proof, you're going to need the unit circle, which is a circle with radius of length one always. So any radius you draw here will always be of length one. Uh, as well as that, you need a point P and a point Q. So if you remember the coordinates of any point on the unit circle, is given by cos a and sine a, where a is the angle it makes with the positive x axis. That's a bit comp more complicated than it needs to be. So if you have a radius going from the center point to whatever coordinate point you have, so in this case it's p, the angle it makes there, a, that's the coordinates of your point. It's cos a and sine a, depending on that angle. And it's the same with q here. So q is another point that's here. The radius uh, between the center point and q makes an angle b with itself on the x-axis. That means the coordinates of Q are cos B and sine B. So that's back in our definition of the unit circle. You can draw any of these angles and the coordinates will always be cos of the angle, sine of the angle. Okay. Also, we have the angle A minus B, which is just the angle in between the two of them. Yeah. So A minus B will give us this angle here. As you can see, I have um, radius 1 written in there twice. So I'm just going to scribble out everything you need, um, just some kind of bullet points for your diagram. So there's a checklist, I just went through uh, talking about them. So just a unit circle, radius one, the angle A, the angle B, so that's these ones here, angle A, angle B, unit circle, your angle A minus B, which is this one here. You need your point P, which is the coordinates of which are cos A, sine A, and your point Q, and those coordinates are cos B, sine B. And again, if you wanna uh, learn why it's cos B, sine B, or cos A, sine A, you can go back to our video about the unit circle. Um, yeah, so I'm going to go through, there are two things you have to do in this proof. I'll go to yellow for this. One, well, you need to get the distance between P and Q. You need to do it twice, but there's two different ways. You need to do it with the cosine rule. So cosine rule, I'm going to say distance PQ, yeah? And then secondly, you need to find, um, I'm going to say coordinate geometry. Co coordinate geometry and again we need to find the distance pq so once you do the two of those the proof is practically done so i'll do number one first so we're going to have a triangle here i'm going to call this o so o p q o this is our angle a minus b and we have our point p here and our point Q here. So this is, I'm going to call it just uh, X for now. And then this is going to be of length one. And this is of length one, like we have in the diagram there. Okay. So we have a triangle one, one X, and we have our angle A minus B. So if you remember the cosine rule formula, I'm just going to write it down as it's given first. It's going to be A squared is equal to B squared plus C squared minus 2BC cos of a. So the cosine rule in this case now is going to be x squared is equal to 1 squared plus 1 squared minus 2 by 1 by 1 by cos of a minus b. Yeah, because a just stands for whatever angle is in between this one and this one. So in this case, the angle is a minus b. So we're going to get x squared is going to be equal to 1 plus 1 minus 2 cos of a minus b and just the last line we're going to get is x squared is equal to 2 minus 2 cos of a minus b okay so we're going to leave that there for now i'm just going to put a little box around it so we can come back to it so that is number one done we got the distance pq with the cosine rule now we're going to go to number two so we have here our point P and our point Q. So I'm going to write those out. I'm going to write P is cos of A sine of A and Q is cos of B sine of B. I'm just going to write under those in yellow. This is going to be our X1 and our, and our Y1. This is going to be our X2 and our Y2. So Y2. And you'll see why I'm doing that now 
in a second because we're going to use the formula for the distance between two points in coordinate geometry, which is um, the length of PQ is going to be equal to the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. Okay, so I stick all those into this big nasty formula. We're going to get um, x2 is cos of b minus x1 is cos of a squared plus y2 is sine of b minus y1 is sine of a squared, all of that under a square root. Uh, and we're actually going to square that, so that's going to be pq. So if we square both sides here, we're going to get, oh, no, that's supposed to be, uh, there we go, pq there, is pq squared, is going to just be equal to, so you can get rid of the, the square root, cos of b minus cos of a squared, plus sine of b minus sine of a squared, Okay, and now we just need to work this nasty thing out. So I've ran out of space here, so I'm just gonna have to move it over uh, and up here. So hold on a second. Okay, so I'm gonna continue here. It's gonna be PQ squared is equal to cos of B minus cos of A squared plus sine of A minus, sorry, no, it's sine of B minus sine of A sine of b minus sine of a squared, okay? Square this and you get cos squared b minus two cos b cos of a plus cos squared of a, okay? So it's, it's gonna get messy and long, uh, plus sine squared b minus two sine of b sine of a plus sine squared of a. So now I'm gonna group these two things together. You see we have cos squared b and sine squared b. We have cos squared a and sine squared a. I'm gonna write those two together. So we're gonna have cos squared a plus sine squared a plus cos squared b plus sine squared b. Okay, so that's just cos squared b, sine squared b, cos squared a, sine squared a. It's gonna be minus 2 cos b cos of a minus 2 sine b sine of a. So if you guys recognize this here, that's one of the first trigonometric identities we did. So cos squared a plus sine squared a is equal to 1. So I'm going to start in green there. So that's equal to 1. And the same with cos squared b plus sine squared b plus 1. Uh, and I'm going to factorize this. So it's going to be minus two multiplied by cos of b cos of a plus sine of b sine of a. So if you want to uh, multiply that out, you'll find that it's, it goes back to two minus two cos b cos a minus two sine b sine a. And uh, so this is quite a kind of messy proof, but it's just about keeping your head about you, um, making sure not to make mistakes, squaring things, and it should all work out in the end. And that's going to be equal to 2 minus 2. So 1 plus 1 is going to be 2 minus 2 cos of b cos of a plus sine of b sine of a. Okay, and that, if we go back up, is pq squared. So almost at the end there. So we have pq squared is equal to 2 minus 2. 2 multiplied by cos b cos of a plus sine b sine of a and also on this side we have x squared is equal to 2 minus 2 cos of a minus b so since x squared is just the same as pq squared okay i'm going to write something over here i'm going to write let's go orange i'm going to say pq squared is equal to pq squared yeah which is obvious um, and now we can let the two different pq squares we have equal each other. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this one here equal this one here. So it's going to be, just check it again, it's 2 minus 2 cos of a minus b. 2 minus 2 
cos of a minus b is equal to this thing here, 2 minus 2 cos of b cos of a plus sine of b sine of a. Yeah? So I'm going to cancel the 2s on both sides. So just bear with me, it's almost done. And then also I'm going to cancel the minus 2s on both sides as well. So um, divide by both sides by minus 2. And we're going to be left with, I'll finish in red, cos of a minus b is equal to, and I'm just going to write this in a different way. I'm going to write the a first. I'm going to write cos of a, cos of b plus sine of a, sine of b. So it's the same thing. I just wrote the sine of a and the cos of a before the other one. And there we have it. So I know that was quite long, but it isn't so difficult if you look at it at each individual step. So the first thing you need to do is you need to draw this diagram and make sure all of these things are in it. Then you need to find the distance between P and Q using the cosine rule. So that's just A squared is equal to B squared plus C squared minus 2BC cos of A. So you stick all the numbers in and you're going to get something uh, like P, PQ squared or X squared is equal to 2 minus 2 cos of A minus B. Next, you have to do the same thing using coordinate geometry. So you use this long formula to find the distance between P and Q. Um, and then once you have that, so that's a little bit of a messy thing to work out, then you just let them equal to each other. You cancel all the twos and you're left with cos of A minus B is equal to this nice thing here. And that's the proof done. So I won't hold you any longer. That was quite a long video, but you have to have that learned off by heart for the, for the leaving cert. And we'll see you next time for examples on how to use uh, compound angle identities like this.